Hi, my name is Nicole Gagner. Um, I am a teaching artist that's on the North Dakota and South Dakota teaching artist roster. Um, and I have been tasked today to make a video showing you how easy it is to make your own window paint. Um, you can see behind me, I uh, completed this in not long, just an afternoon. Um, so I will give you some tips and tricks on how to do that. If you need a little bit more information, I've also put together a quick little handout uh, that kind of goes over step by step what I did uh, to mix up the paint, what the measurements are, uh, some tips on color mixing. So if any of that buzzes by you a little bit too fast, don't stress. Um, I've got all that info for you. It's really quick and easy. Um, and it can be a really fun way to brighten the day of somebody that's walking past on the street, or um, you could even surprise a friend with this. It's really easy to clean off, um, so you don't have to stress that you're gonna make a mess on their windows that they won't be able to clean off. Um, if window paint seems a little bit too much for you, I hope you'll still watch the video and enjoy how fun it is to see this all come together. But I've got more videos coming where I'm gonna show you how you could make um, some heart ornaments to leave behind for friends, um, and also how you can make your own DIY chalk paint. So those are later videos coming up, so watch for those. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna just jump into how easy it is to mix up this paint yourself and then we'll get started painting, so stick around. Okay, so to get started, you're gonna need some kind of craft paint. Um, I'm using just an acrylic craft paint. Tempera paint works fine too, as long as it's something um, that's pretty opaque, not too translucent. Um, watercolor wouldn't work, so stick to like some kind of acrylic or craft paint or tempera is fine too. Um, you're also gonna need some dish soap. So I just have mine in a little uh, mason jar here, but if you just have it out of the squirt bottle, that works fine too. Um, any kind of dish soap works. Um, doesn't really matter as long as it's a liquid dish soap. Um, you'll also need some paper towels to clean up your brushes um, and some clean water. I like to keep my water just in a big, uh, like a yogurt container or something that um, isn't gonna be reused again for food or anything like that. This is just a paint bucket now. Um, so, and you can use um, any kind of paintbrushes that you have. I like big paintbrushes because you can cover a lot of space. Um, if you have foam brushes, those work too, or even uh, regular house painting brushes. Um, those sometimes will show like the bristle marks or the streaks a little bit. Um, so I prefer kind of a soft, artist brush or a foam brush, but you can kind of experiment or just work with what you have. That's totally fine too. Um, and then to hold your paint, I like to use just like clear uh, deli containers. Um, but if you have extra yogurt cups or something that you could seal, um, anything like that could totally work too. Again, something that you wouldn't put food in again later. These are just for paint now. I'm not going to put anything else in them afterwards. All right, so once you have all your supplies gathered to mix up your paint so that it won't permanently stay on your windows, um, you're going to add the dish soap to the paint. Your ratio is going to be a tablespoon of dish soap for every half a cup of paint. Um, if your paint ends up being a little bit too runny, you can dial that back a little bit, use a little bit less dish soap. Um, or if you're really worried about the paint not washing off, you could add a little bit more dish soap and uh, make sure that you just apply it really thin so it doesn't drip. Um, I'm not too worried about the paint not washing off in my case because uh, I haven't had any problems with it in the past, but also if um, you're painting just on glass, not anything else, worst case scenario, you could always take a razor blade to it. That's how, um, if you ever see professionally painted windows like around the holidays or anything, they just use straight acrylic paint. And then when the holidays are over, they take a straight razor, and just scrape it all off or like a paint scraper to peel it off. I want it to come off a little bit easier than that though. So I am using the dish soap. Um, and the way that I measure that out, I actually um, make a mark on my um, cup where it's going to be filled up because I don't want to necessarily get uh, paint in my measuring cup. If you have measuring cups that are dedicated just for art or playtime, um, and you don't mind that they have a little paint in them, you could uh, pour the paint straight in there and then pour it into your end uh, cup here. But what I did was I measured it out with water. That way I can know when I've got a half a cup of paint in there. And I just did that on all my delis so that I don't have to uh, measure into this uh, separately. I do have a 
uh, art only uh, t tablespoon uh, measure here though. So I will um, put the soap in it. Um, soap, it's fine if you use your food ones, but since I got paint on the handle of this one now, no, it's an art measuring cup and that's totally fine. So I will mix up a few more paints to get started on my window here and then we'll get painting. If you don't want to mix up a half cup of paint at a time, if you're only doing a small amount of windows, um, you could use a quarter teaspoon of soap to a, or I mean, I'm sorry, a half a teaspoon of soap to a quarter cup of paint and that ratio would still say, stay about this. I'm just going to use one of my brushes to mix my paint in here. Um, you could use popsicle sticks or paint stir sticks if you have them. Um, but if I know I'm going to go ahead and paint with this color anyways, might as well mix it in with a brush and then just start using it. If you do get any drips on your windowsills or on the ground while you're painting, I recommend wiping them up with a paper towel uh, right away. You can wet the paper towel down a little bit if they're not coming up. Um, the paint is designed to come off windows really easily, but things like wood or um, floors or even cement, it might stay on it a little bit longer. So if you can get it while it's wet, it'll clean up a little bit easier. Okay, so I jumped straight in with my orange paint. Um, you by no means have to start with orange paint. You can start with any color that uh, you kind of want to be the base of your design. Um, if you don't want to freewheel it and just kind of go uh, with the flow like I'm doing here, you could definitely pre-sketch something as well. Um, so if I was designing a window that was maybe going to be a little bit more complicated and I wanted to pre-sketch things out, I would try to draw something on paper that uh, kept kind of the same dimensions of my window. So uh, here it's a pretty long and skinny composition. Um, if you were doing windows that are a little bit taller, maybe it'd be a more vertical composition, something like that. Um, and you can really pre-plan things out that way. Um, sometimes I would also start with a uh, smaller brush for my beginning sketch. Um, but if you're jumping right in like I am and just kind of going uh, freestyle, uh, you might want to grab kind of a bigger brush to cover a little bit of space. Um, I like to start with pretty big brushes and then when I want to get down to the little details later, that's when I'll pull out um, a smaller brush. Sometimes I'll start out with uh, black or a white paint and then kind of fill in from there. Um, but really, you know, it's up to you if you want to do something a little bit more freestyle like I did here. Since I was just using such uh, simple shapes, hearts, you can really uh, kind of embellish with that. But if you're doing something a little bit more precise, like something that needs to be geometric or measured out, you can plan that out um, a little bit more if you'd like to. Um, so I mixed all of my colors myself. Um, to make them a little bit lighter or darker. So even if I'm using orange out of the tub, a lot of times I'll add a little bit of white or yellow to that to kind of brighten it up. And I really, um, depending on how complicated you want your design to be, you can use as many or as few colors um, as you want. Um, if you want a really simple color scheme, I recommend um, kind of taking a look at the color wheel, deciding what you want your main color to be. And then if you look at the color on the opposite side of the color wheel, that color is called its complement. And that's an easy way to know uh, two colors that are going to go together. For example, if you look at red on the color wheel, across from red is green. Uh, that's why it's such a popular color for things like Christmas. The uh, complement of red is green. Um, also, uh, across from yellow would be purple. So, uh, purple and yellow are a common color to go together for sports teams, things like that. Um, that's just one way to know that you're getting kind of a pleasing to the eye color scheme. 
Um, you could also decide to go with analogous colors. So analogous colors are colors that are close together on the color wheel. Uh, so for example, if you wanted to go, um, you knew that you wanted to be uh, in the orange family, like I'm starting with here, analogous colors to orange would be yellow and red because they're on either side of uh, orange on the color wheel. Um, you could also pick something uh, just on one or the other side of the color wheel. So if you are dividing the color wheel in half, uh, one is going to be warmer colors, so red, orange, yellow. The other half is going to be cooler colors, so green, blue, purple. Um, so you could go with warm or cool color schemes also. Um, really, there's no right or wrong. It's just if you don't know where to start, those can be a few things that you can use uh, for jumping off. I started out with mostly warm colors here, but I always knew that my uh, plant hearts that I'm kind of, uh, heart flowers, I guess, that I'm planting here, that they would have uh, green stems. So I wasn't quite going with just a warm color scheme. I almost went for a full uh, rainbow color scheme here. So, you know, one color from every shade of the rainbow. Um, again, really no, no right or wrong way to plan a color scheme. Uh, but that, those are just some things that you can look into when you're uh, pre-planning how you want to lay this out. All right, I'll be back in just a minute with a few more tips and tricks. Uh, but for now, just enjoy the uh, process of painting, I guess. So this style of window painting can work uh, from inside or outside. Um, you might just want to keep in mind that if you write any words in your art, uh, that viewing it from the inside, if you write them from the outside, might look backwards or vice versa. Um, but other than that, usually it works pretty well um, inside or out. Um, eventually on the outside, uh, rain might wash it off a little bit, um, but I've, either way it can look pretty nice. Um, there is kind of a layering effect with the paint since it is opaque. If you paint over one of the paints with another paint, it might uh, not quite show through on the other side. So you might not want to layer too much over the top and kind of keep the paint colors more um, a little bit next to each other rather than uh, sitting too much over the top. So that's just something else to keep in mind as you're uh, planning your window painting adventure. Hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Um, but really, you know, paint is washable. You can always come back and do something a little bit differently. So don't don't stress too much about it. Just have fun with it and uh, keep it bright and cheerful, and it's always gonna be a nice addition to any window. So that's all for now. We'll come back in a little bit with a few more uh, tips for you.
if you wanted to mix up some of your own colors. Uh, for example, if you ha only had, uh, if you only wanted to buy three paints, you didn't want to buy any more paints than that, you want to stick with your three primary colors. So red, yellow, blue, those are your primaries. Those can't be mixed. Um, but from those primary colors, in theory, you can mix up pretty much all other colors. Um, it doesn't always 100% work in uh, actuality just because of the way that paints are made. Sometimes their pigments are a little bit different and they don't want to uh, mix up together exactly. But in theory, you should be able to mix any uh, colors. When you mix uh, two of your primary colors together, you'll get a secondary color. So for example, if you um, mixed red with blue, you'll get purple. So purple is a secondary color. Um, and then if you mixed a secondary color with a primary, you get those colors that happen in between. So if you took your secondary color purple um, and mixed it with a little bit more of your primary color red, you would get a, a red purple, uh, you know, a um, that's called a tertiary color, those colors that happen in between your secondary and your primary colors. So depending on which colors you have, you can really um, get super creative with your color palette. Um, if you add white to any color, it'll get lighter. And so say I had added white to all of my colors here, maybe I would have had a little bit more of a uh, pastel color scheme. Um, if you added black to all of your colors, uh, you would get more of a uh, dark, muted color scheme. So that's definitely an option for you to play around with too if you want to add white or black to some of your colors just to have a few more options there. Um, you can see I've kind of switched brushes here because I wanted uh, just a little bit of a smaller line. Uh, most of my first uh, strokes that I made were with the big brush. Um, I like starting off with a big brush and then uh, filling in with smaller details later. Um, sometimes though you might want to sketch out with a really small brush and use that for uh, figuring things out at first, but then anytime that you want to fill in uh, big spaces and really cover a lot of distance, you'll want to uh, use one of your bigger brushes, if, especially if you have um, like foam brushes or something like that, those can cover a lot of area. Um, sometimes I'll even use foam rollers, uh, just depending on what effect I'm going for. You just want to make sure uh, that you're okay with the texture that those might leave behind. So um, depending on, you know, kind of what you're going for, I've even had really good luck using uh, foam stamps and cutout shapes uh, from foam. So that can be a really fun thing to play around with. Um, it just kind of depends on what, what effect you're going for. Um, and that'll really kind of uh, inform how you use the paint also. Um, if your paint is really, really runny, uh, stamping with foam might be a little bit harder. Um, it might want to drip a little bit more. I think you'll notice uh, occasionally I had to go back and uh, use my brush to kind of spread out some drips. If the paint uh, gets too thick with the soap, it wants to drip. Um, so that's just something that you can kind of spread spread it out a little bit thinner, or if it starts to drip, just wipe it up with a paper towel or something. Um, and I highly recommend uh, playing around with your composition and trying out different things because, you know, it's washable. You can always try something else. Um, if you're not sure if your painting is done, you might need to just step back from it. Um, there's a lot of uh, information that can be gained just from standing a little bit further away, um, especially with art like this that's meant to be viewed from much further away. This is meant to be viewed uh, from the street, in theory, or in my case, since these windows actually face my backyard, uh, but I'm on a hill, it's meant to be viewed from very, very far away, from down the hill. Um, so I'm keeping that in mind any time that I'm making my shapes here. I want to keep it um, pretty simple and easy to read from far away. I wouldn't want to get too caught up in teeny tiny little shapes. In this instance, um, it kind of depends on 
uh, how your end piece is going to be viewed. So that's just something to keep in mind there. Um, when you're planning out your window, I recommend using uh, kind of repeating simple shapes like this. In this case, I picked hearts to kind of show uh, support for everybody that was staying at home and uh, support for people that were still, uh, you know, going to work and doing all of those things. Um, but you might want to do a different shape. Maybe you want to do um, a different kind of flower or something completely different, but having those uh, repeating shapes uh, that you can make with pretty simple brush strokes throughout your work will help uh, kind of lead everything together and kind of um, draw the eye around and really keep your composition moving all around. If you are painting outside, it might be good to keep in mind um, if you're going to be in direct sunlight for a while, uh, you'll want to cover uh, your skin, you know, wear sunscreen, uh, wear a sun hat if you have one. Um, if you are looking kind of in the direction of sun, um, you might be tempted to wear sunglasses, but keep in mind that colors look different when you wear sunglasses. Um, so I like to, um, if it's a very sunny day and the sun is in my eyes, instead of sunglasses, I'll wear, you know, a baseball cap or a big floppy hat of some sort. Um, anything to kind of protect my face and my eyes from the sun, but that won't necessarily uh, change my perception of the colors. It's just something that you don't really notice. Uh, until you switch uh, from sunglasses back to uh, regular glasses or no glasses. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, that tint really did change those colors. So that's another little thing to keep in mind when you're painting outside. All right, that's all for now. I'll pop back in with a few more ideas and things that might help you out as we go. You can see how quick and simple that was to paint windows. You could do this inside or outside. Um, you could even surprise a friend or if you know somebody at 
um, a nursing home or an assisted living or something like that that needs a little uh, brightening of their day. It looks great from outside or inside, so you could even do this uh, when you're not able to be close to somebody. Um, so it's just a super fun activity. I hope you try it out. If you do, let me know. I'd love to see your results. Um, thanks so much, and thank you to the South Dakota Council on the Arts for their support in making this video happen.